What is up my Web3 family? Welcome back to the Critical Complex channel. Let's dive right into the content and talk about Gala Music since we know that we are very close to the launch of this platform. There's a lot of people who are speculating, a lot of people who have purchased Node license, a lot of music NFT holders. And one of the things I haven't done before is go through and talk about the emerging upcoming artists on Gala Music. And I think this is one of the most interesting parts of the platform because there's a lot of artists here that we haven't heard of before, that we haven't seen before. And some people may be familiar with some of these artists, but most of the artists that Gala is partnering with right now, we are not familiar with. And now we have a chance to learn about these artists. I think it's really cool that they decided to go this route. And you have to take in mind and remember that Gala has some very experienced advisors like Layla Steinberg and DJ FN, Nick Adler on their advisory board. And these people are experienced. They've been in the music industry and they are dealing with artists like Snoop Dogg, some of the highest level artists to ever touch music in history. And right now, you know, Snoop Dogg is one of those artists who's at the top of the legendary, you know, the hip hop legends book. And so, it's very important for them to be working with Snoop Dogg and bringing the Death Row Records catalog to Gala Music. But what's really cool here is that all of these NFTs that you see are new and upcoming emerging artists. If you scroll down a little bit, you can see some more. You see Valerie Ann, who's a really cool artist. You got Louis King and him and Aliana, which is another Gala Music artist. I'm hearing a lot about Aliana. Huge shout out to Aliana. She seems to be the person who's connecting a lot of upcoming, upcoming emerging artists with Gala Music. She also seems to be an artist who a lot of other artists just respect. So one of the coolest things that Gala's been doing is the top of the drops. They've been bringing on these artists to this, this show that they started on YouTube called Top of the Drops. So make sure you check out the Gala Music YouTube channel and check out Top of the Drops that showcases these new artists and what they're working on and what they're doing. And they are at the top of the drops. Another one of my favorite artists so far is OK Kenji. I think he has a very unique sound. Huge shout out to OK Kenji. Follow him on Twitter also. And then you got Bobo.xx. And these were sold out immediately. So Bobo must have a fan base that is following him to Gala Music because his NFTs immediately sold out, right? And you got Aspect Zavi, Kenny Morningstar, and Jack. I, I hear a lot about Jack also in the music space. The radar, you know, it has set my eyes on new artists like Jack. Now I can actually learn more about her and see more. And, and it keeps her in my mind as an artist holding her NFT. This is a really cool thing. And, you know, people think that NFTs are all about the JPEG and the no, it's about the metadata. What is stored in that NFT? What are you really buying? And here on the Gala Music platform, you're really buying music. <laughs> it's like you're buying music on the blockchain. It's not on the blockchain, it's an NFT, but basically it is on the blockchain. It's stored in IPFS. This is an opportunity like no other. So one thing I do want to point out is the levels here, the bronze. This means that, so Gala did change this. This was, at first it was like common, uncommon, rare, uh, super rare, or, or an ancient and legendary. There were like tiers to these levels. And a lot of these upcoming artists that Gala's been pushing are putting out bronze level NFTs. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that the level that they're labeled at is categorized based on either the amount of streams this song already has collected or the hype around that song or the hype around the artist. Maybe they've tested it on some sort of algorithm to see what level of listens this song may get. And one of the things that I do think is gonna happen is I think that these levels of rarity will represent a tier that you're in for how much you can earn or how many tokens you can possibly earn a day from that NFT. So there's not a lot of people talking about it. Even Gallup Music themselves aren't talking about things like how this will work and what this means. So it's just all speculation. A lot of people ask me, do I work for Gala or 
How am I connected to Gala? Man, I just read. <laughs> I just read. I go read in the Discord. I read. I talk with Taco, but he didn't tell me anything. I just, you know, knowing him in the background and having conversations with him. Every now and then, I connect with somebody from Gala and just have a conversation. That's how I know. But I don't know things that nobody else doesn't know. Like everything is public. I just pay attention. So right here on this NFT that we're looking at, Love Sick, Loving You by Jack, you can see the level of rarity is bronze here. And you can see that this NFT is very limited edition. And why do I say that? Because there's only 140 of these NFTs that exist. Now, take into consideration everything I said in the other video when I was talking about how the network will possibly work with the nodes and how the metadata will hold the music of these, NFT, of these NFTs, basically. So in order for this network to work, these NFTs must hold the metadata, must hold the music in the metadata in order for that NFT to actually be connected to that music. Otherwise, it's just a JPEG that represents that you bought something. So I don't think Gal is going the cheap route. I think Gal is going to really give us the music in the metadata of that NFT. And so when people want to access that song, they have to access it through you because you hold the NFT. So it's up to you if you're gonna attach your love sick, loving you NFT to a node and allow people to stream that music. But I'm pretty sure if you don't, Gala will. So somebody has to. And at some point, if you're a supporter, a fan of the artist Jack, and you hold this NFT, you could share it with someone else's node. If you don't have a Gala music node or you can't afford one or you don't want one, you could attach this music NFT to someone else's node and allow people to stream your music NFT on their node. This is sort of like, this kind of reminds me of how the Spider Tanks game works. Uh, it sort of reflects the rewards model of the Spider Tanks game. And I think that's sort of the direction that Gala is taking this. A lot of familiarities here. So there's only 118 of these left in the whole world, you know? Hundreds of millions of people will like this artist. Hundreds of millions of people will want to listen to this song. You're talking about till the end of time, this song will be promoted and pushed on one of the biggest music platforms, Gala Music. And, and there's gonna be a category for artists that are just streaming. And I believe that this NFT and many others will be a part of that because these are the first. These are the first chosen artists and Gal is doing a lot of moving around, a lot of shows. They just had an open mic. He shout out to everybody who won in that open mic. I know one of the people that won was Just Shocky. He was shout out to Just Shocky because I voted for that guy. I thought it was really cool. I like his music. And there were two other winners that were there. Um, there's a video atop of the drops that announces this. It's actually on Instagram and YouTube. So you can check both of those out if you want to. Here's one thing that nobody points out and doesn't give Gala enough credit for. Down here at the bottom of each NFT, you see a label that says One Tree Planet. Gala Games is committed to health and safety of our planet. We will plant one tree through One Tree Planet every time you make a purchase on our site. We're committed to becoming and staying carbon negative. And that's one of the biggest highlights that I heard Sarah Buxton mention about the Geary blockchain, which actually isn't the official name for the Gala blockchain, but that's what a lot of people are calling it, Project Geary. And one of the biggest highlights that I took away from when Sarah Buxton was actually talking about the Geary blockchain was that it is going to be carbon negative and it has to be in order for it to be one of the most interesting blockchains in the world in order for major companies that are gaming developer companies that are actually producing really, really good games to build upon to actually even want to be even able to build upon the Gala blockchain it is going to need to be carbon neutral. We don't need a gaming blockchain that burns as much energy as Bitcoin and a lot of these other proof of work models, but that is not the direction that Gala is going. This network is going to be carbon negative. And what do we mean by that? That is it's sort of like what you see AVAX and Polygon has accomplished. Somehow these guys are using the technology that makes their blockchain carbon negative and it doesn't really burn a lot of energy. It's gonna be so much like, right now I can't say what artists are gonna do until I start seeing things here and there. 
like here and there, I see something sort of like what I just said a minute ago about if an artist has an NFT and they wanted to support those particular supporters, they can say everyone who has this NFT gets to do this or gets this. Hey, you want to meet me? You want to see me in person? I'll be in New Orleans, Louisiana next weekend, blah, blah, blah. If you have this NFT, you can come meet me. We can hang out, chill, talk, laugh, listen to some music. I'll actually show you some music that I just recorded the other day. Nobody has this yet. Like things like that. Like it's going to be so much bigger than what people are anticipating. Now, Gala hasn't even realized everything that can be done here. Okay. Everybody hasn't really wrap their minds around this shit. It's gonna take a while for people to really, really start like being super creative. I think that, what's her name? Emily Laser, who dropped the album September morning. I think she's one of the most creative Web3 artists that I've seen so far. She actually knows how to use the space. And what I mean by use the space is provide her fans with opportunities that they would even want anyway. People will look at it and say, oh my God, $100 for an NFT or $100 just to meet someone. Well, there's someone who is dying for that opportunity. <laughs> someone who loves that opportunity. And that person is who that NFT was made for. So we can also talk about the player node functions. You can support streaming. Once NFT tracks are hosted on a player node, it will stream that track to fans within the network as they listen. This makes it easy for node operators to share their hosted tracks all over the world, while also encouraging demand for the most listened to tracks. And you're talking about hosting music. Also, rather than a centralized structure where a platform itself would hold all the music and control access to it, every listen on the Gala Music comes from an NFT track hosted on a player node or fan node within the platform. Node operators can host their own tracks or allow other fans to bring music to their node. So that being said, if you are a node license owner, a node operator, you can buy your own music NFTs and attach them to the nodes. Now, this is something I have read before, so I can confirm this. This is just speculation on my behalf but you can only attach one of each NFT to a node. So in out of the entire Gala Music catalog, if there's 75 songs all together, I'm talking about individually from each artist, you can only attach 75 songs to your node. Um, and then say a year later, Gala drops 50 more songs, uh, probably less than a year, but you know, a few months later, Gala drops 50 more songs. Then you can buy those and attach those also. Or you can allow others to attach those songs. Let's say Jane Hancock has 11 songs on 11 NFTs on Gala Music and you have 10 of them and you wanted to have all 11. Well, you can allow someone to stake or host, but attach their, that, that 11th song that you don't have to your music player node in order to fulfill that album. So now someone can come to your node and listen to the entire album. But with that being said, if someone was to attach their NFT to your node, then you would share the rewards from those listens of that song with the person who owns that NFT. Like a mechanism that they've taken from their gaming ecosystem. This isn't just a music streaming platform. This is web three. And if you know what that means, if you know how to uh, think about this and how the blockchain can connect with other things like games, like these NFTs can be used in games because their games and their music platform is going to be on the same blockchain. All right. So this music can be used in games and films and other ways Gala see fit. Let's talk about the benefits of a fan. As a fan that purchases NFTs of their favorite artists, whether it be Lil Extra or Ed Balloon or Monia Ashaibi, whoever your favorite Gala Music artist is, as a fan, Gala Music is built to help fans enjoy music by purchasing an NFT, operating a node, or listening to song NFTs. Fans unlock the full power of Web3 music and entertainment. Exclusive tracks, releases, and merchandise, access to brand new content and unreleased music, collectibles that bring the world of music, film, and games together. So see there, my speculation is correct. 
concerts, in-person experiences, and metaverse events. Ha! Haven't seen that before. Haven't realized that Gala Music has something to do with the metaverse. Probably going to be one of the most important metaverses in the metaverse space. Um, they also partner with Upland. Upland.